Red First Credit Union Hotline via Zoom for another Maddich Monday is national champion and ESPN College Football Insider Trevor Maddich. Trevor, a lot of good things happened for BYU on Saturday night. What was the most impressive thing that stuck out to you? Well, most people are pointing to that pass over 60 yards in the air that Zach Wilson flicked across his body effortlessly for a touchdown to Dax Milne on the left. That was an amazing throw, and people are still talking about it. They will for a long time. The thing that I liked the best was Isaiah Kafusi's pick six. The way he ran the ball was like he'd been a running back all his life. When offensive guys came in to try to tackle him, he held that ball high and tight. Then he cut. Other guys would try to strip it. He would cover it up with both hands. And the thing is, most of the time, if a running back covers it with both hands, he can go straight, but he can't do much else. Kafusi was going sideways and making a cut with it covered with both hands. That was an amazing run for that pick six. What's incredible with that as well is that he actually called it. He said he texted Keenan Peely, who was out for the game, hey, I got a pick six for you. He told the BYU football videographer. Um, he said to the sideline before the drive, hey, I got a pick six right now. So uh, that's pretty incredible. Did you ever call out that the offense would do something and then you did it on the field? No, we didn't need to because we know we were going to do it and everybody else did. It would have been redundant. <laughs> Although, let me, let me add this about that pick six. I love this. Uh, Daw was chasing the quarterback to the right sideline. So he has big number 99 all over him. In front of the quarterback so he couldn't turn up was Kyrus Tonga. So he had Daw in his ear hole, Tonga in front of him looking hungry, and the least of his worries was Isaiah Kafusi down the field. So those guys <laughs> ought to get about three points on that pick six. Oh, fantastic stuff. Trevor Maddich of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation. You've already answered the uh, question that we talked about in the initial block of what the better play was. Does BYU as a team now with that effort uh, against Texas State deserve to be a top 10 team? They are in the coaches poll just outside in the AP poll. I think they're playing like that. They're taking care of business. They're doing everything they can do with what they're presented with. And they're doing it in a way that a top 10 team would do. Keep in mind that Clemson struggled in the first half against uh, Syracuse this last week. As a matter of fact, Syracuse often gives Clemson fits, almost beat them a couple of times. And then they come back in the second half. They do better. They pull away. They assert their dominance. So, you know, it's not like every top 10 team always dominates every game, but for the most part, BYU has been performing in dominating fashion like a top 10 team should do. Where's the ceiling for BYU? We, we discussed our opinions, and I think BYU probably around seven feels like the ceiling. The ceiling in the polls is not dependent on them as long as they take care of their business. And by the way, that is important, and it's hard. They have a lot of hard football to play and hard games to win before they'll get to that point. But assuming that they're able to do that, I think – it's what the voters think, and it's what people do in front of them. Keep in mind that Georgia has a chance to pick up a second loss to Alabama. Uh, Texas A&M is up there. They have a chance to get knocked out. There, there are teams in there above BYU that very well could cannibalize each other and open the door. And so that's what their hope is to continue to rise in the polls. They don't control that, but I think from the outside looking in, what we have to look at is not just what they do but what other teams do, because I think the respect that BYU has garnered among broadcasters, pollsters, everybody else out there, college football fans, is that if they got to seven or even six, if they continue to play like they are, nobody would say, yeah, they don't deserve that. BYU seemingly survived the Big Ten influx with Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan, among others. Of course, you know, it does BYU a favor when Penn State loses, but do you think that the Cougars are through the woods with the Big Ten teams? You know what? I think they kind of are. You know, on the one hand, a lot of voters in the AP poll were not voting for Big Ten teams until they played. That's why Ohio State was at six. Now they've moved up from there. But at the same time, they are, will have to play each other, a lot of them. Certainly, if Wisconsin carries on to the Big Ten championship game, they'll have to play somebody there. Penn State's already lost a game, and there's a chance they could beat Ohio State. So right now, the unknowns are less than the knowns. Now the Big Ten has to play its season out and see if they will cannibalize each other. 
BYU is hoping to go 10 and 0, but here's the situation. We've talked about it. Spencer brought it up that BYU will only play one game between when the college football playoff rankings come out, November 24th, right after BYU plays North Alabama, probably live on BYU TV. It's going to be against San Diego State on December 12th. Yet a lot of the Power Five leagues are going to play meaningful late games, a lot of ranked matchups, probably. Does BYU need to add a game of significance November 28th or December 5th to ensure the possibility of a New Year's Six invite should BYU be undefeated? Or do you think at 10-0 they would be okay? It would help if they could add a game or two. And the, the thing they're going up against is that group of five and Power Five teams are in conference championship races at that point. The Power Five won't add them because they've got limitations as to what they'll do. There may be some possibilities in the group of five of teams that are ranked high enough that they would like to have their schedule bolstered by playing BYU. That might open up a possibility. But again, that goes to what the conference bylaws are and what they're allowed to do. There are some independents that could pop in there. There, there are possibilities. But when it comes down to it, I think that the more BYU can play in dominating fashion, the better it will be. Because right now, is it possible to get to the playoff? A lot of people are talking about that. Without regard to whether or not they're good enough to be in the playoff, I think that getting to the New Year's Six would be an amazing, astonishing accomplishment. I mean, think about it. Even when BYU won the national championship, they didn't play in what we would consider a New Year's Six Bowl. That would be a phenomenal feat. And I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Tom Homo, the athletic director, is trying right now to put some games into those empty spots. ESPN's Trevor Maddich on BYU Sports Nation. Trevor, the question for us now is looking at what UCF has done in the past, run the table, been perfect, not been in the college football playoff. Will a non-Power 5 team ever really be in the discussion? And is it 2020 because of all of the weirdness? You know what, Spencer, I think that 2020 could have been the year, would have been the year, had the Big Ten and the Pac-12 maintain their position of trying to play football in the spring. That takes two Power Five Conference Championships out of it. So you've got three conference champions that'll probably be in, and then you've got that fourth spot. And that opens the door to all kinds of possibilities. But the Big Ten coming back and the Pac-12 coming back makes it difficult. Now, the Big 12 has really done itself no favors because Oklahoma and Texas have got, I think, both two losses now. Oklahoma State is still undefeated, but they still have to play Oklahoma and Texas. So I'm not sure that the Big 12 champion has the inside track to get to that fourth spot. But there are still the Pac-12 and the Big 10 to have to deal with. And keep in mind that you could still have a one-loss non-champ out of the SEC. That could make it as well. All these things create the same traffic jam that group of five and non-Power 5 teams have had to deal with since the playoff came into existence. Boise State looked pretty good in uh, week one, a 42-13 win over Utah State, now ranked number 25 in the AP poll. We knew that'd be a big game no matter what, November 6th, but uh, this could be a, a matchup of two ranked teams that could help bolster BYU's schedule. Of course, the toughest game left of the four. Right, and this is massive. I mean, BYU would need to win that game, and that is a tough game to win. I mean, let's not assume that that's a win for the Cougars. That will be, that will be sweat and blood and tears and pain to be able to win a game like that. It would be the same thing for Boise State, by the way, if they win. But this is nobody's pushover. But because of that, I think the voters will have a chance. The college football playoff committee will have a chance to see BYU in that kind of a situation against a ranked team that really could beat most teams in the country. How does BYU do in a situation like that? And if they're able to come out and look good and win that game, it gives them something in their resume that they don't have right now. And so it's promising. Now, they've got to get past Western Kentucky first. They need to be thinking about that game, and not even that. They need to be thinking about what's the, the first play in that game. Not even that. What's the next rep in practice that's in front of us this week, today? That's what they need to be thinking about inside the building. But from the outside, as we look at that, if BYU is able to beat Boise State, and if Boise State wins out and becomes Mountain West champ, that will be a notch in the Cougars' belt that will give them a much better case to sneak into that New Year's Six and maybe higher. We'll see. Trevor, let's finish with this. Who's your top four right now in college football, and how far is BYU outside of that top four? My top four right now is uh, Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, and number four, Georgia. 
I'm not sold on Notre Dame right now like a lot of people are. I'm still worried about their downfield passing game. Against Pitt on Saturday, they had a lot of yards, a lot of long touchdowns, but some of the biggest plays in the passing game happened on poorly thrown balls because of pressure that the secondary just wasn't good enough to make a play on. A playoff caliber secondary would have picked off some of what became touchdown passes for Notre Dame. So I'm not ready there. The But as far as the top four, those are the top four. And uh, what was the second part of your question? Well, how far outside is BYU? Oh, BYU, I've got right now at number seven. I've got Notre Dame ahead of them. I've got Oklahoma State ahead of them because they beat Iowa State. And BYU doesn't have that notch on their resume. And so that matters to a degree. But that's where I've got them. I've got them right now at number seven. Trevor, great stuff. Always nice to catch up with you on Monday. Things are still rolling in Provo. We'll do it again soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Trevor Maddich of ESPN on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Seven.